We're back now, mornings to 10, and the company behind the drug ZepBound now says the medication approved to treat obesity can also help people with sleep apnea. All right, we want to learn about this. So ABC medical correspondent Dr. Darian Sutton is here to tell us more about this. So what gives? So people are losing weight on this. If it's not prescribed, it's $1,000 a month. It's incredibly expensive. It's very expensive, but we're seeing more from it. We're seeing more benefits. And mm -hmm. so for those who are trying to afford it, obviously that's its own category that yeah. we can spend an hours talking about. But mm -hmm. in this study, they looked at those who dealt with obesity and sleep apnea. It's a significant percentage of the American population that deals with sleep apnea, and that's more than just snoring. We're talking about uh, blocking your airway, obstructing your, your blockage of airflow. That leads to chronic disease or increases the risk of things like heart disease and diabetes. In this study, they found a significant reduction in sleep apnea in those who use this medication. Now, it's just adding to the additional benefits that we've seen, uh, not just about weight loss and the treatment of diabetes, but also for uh, cardiovascular disease and other risk factors that can lead to premature death. And can this still help people who deal with sleep apnea but aren't obese? And is there an issue of losing too much weight if you're in that situation? So that's a great question. I think that that study is yet to be fully done. You know, the question is, can we reap these benefits in those who don't often or who don't also deal with obesity? That study has to be done, and I think it, it probably is going to be a complicated one. And the question would be, how do we weigh the risks and the benefits? As a physician, whenever I'm prescribing any medication, you're asking yourself, what are the benefits and what are the risks? And that might be one of those that we'd have to discuss. Us. These types of drugs are so popular nowadays yeah. with a lot of people who are of a certain income level and we talked about the expense and you see Hollywood now where you see celebrities having drastic changes and perhaps you know they may be taking advantage of these medications. There's a new report out this morning from Reuters that we may see in the second quarter of this year uh, a limited supply yeah. of these drugs or limited availability I guess of these drugs. What's up with that? Well we've been continuing to see that. The demand is out peak or peaking out uh, outside of the supply which is a problem. If you look in high income communities Communities, you see many people using this medication. That's always a consequence of any medication that reaps great benefits. It's going to be abused in some way, shape, or form. But the main problem here is that it's keeping it away from those who are most needed of it. You know, we're talking about those who are really needing it and don't have the options or the privilege to do other things to help lose weight, or those where it just simply helps their metabolic syndrome that can't be treated with any other medication. And, and it's that's something that we still have to work on. And it's the delivery mechanism, too. It comes in a syringe. So. And that's one of the problems with these medications is that they are delivered in a specific device and that device also has to be manufactured and the manufacturing issue also involves that and so a lot of this fixing of the supply is also making sure that the device is also being uh, available. So it's not just the medicine, it's not just it's the, the delivery method. It's the delivery method as well. For people who were watching this paying really close attention because they suffer from sleep apnea, yeah. anything else to leave them with today that would help? I think sleep apnea is not something to be ignored. If yeah. you find that you're having the signs or symptoms, your partner, your sleep partner is telling you, you're keeping me awake at night. That is not, some, that is to me a red flag. You need to get evaluated with a formal sleep study. You know, a significant amount of people deal with sleep apnea, more than 30 million people. And again, it's not just about snoring, it's associated to heart disease, increased risk of diabetes, and other chronic diseases. So get evaluated. And I know that machine is uncomfortable, that CPAP machine that we always make fun of, but mm -hmm. it's life-saving. All right, doctor, always great to see you.